Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live on our Patreon channel. Boy, guys, you're going to really like the message I'm going to be loading up on YouTube today as well. Um, I say like it. It may be disturbing. I am going to be speaking about the two witnesses once again, but on a totally different level. And um, that's the alarming part of it. But I, I wanted to come here and share something with you, with my, with our friends here on our Patreon channel. And uh, maybe about a week down the road, we'll release it over on Stephen Benoon, our the channel I load these with on YouTube. But I was praying for someone recently, and as I was speaking to them, I got the revelation of Hebrews chapter eleven, verse one. Uh, I know it sounds crazy to say to get a revelation on this scripture, but, you know, without a revelation, you don't really truly understand what we're reading sometimes. I mean, so think about it. Uh, faith, as uh, the writer of Hebrews, which I, every, most scholars believe it's Paul. Uh, there's some that believe it could have been Priscilla um, uh, or Aquila, for rather, one or the other that wrote this as well. Don't really know. But anyway, let me let me just read this to you, though, and then we're going to really go into it. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, the real correct way to translate that Greek word, if you look it up, is expected. Faith is the substance of things expected for the evidence of things that are not seen. That is so profound when you think about it. Faith is not only is it tangible when you have faith, it's tangible. It is tangible, it's an evidence, and an evidence is something that is physical, but it's something that is, it's an evidence of something that cannot, is not even seen at the moment, but it's, but it is a substance of things that are expected. Take instead of the word hope, hope almost puts it out there like it's never going to get there. You ever think about that? I hope I'm going to wake up in the morning. Well, you're going to wake up anyway, most likely. I mean, it's very unusual that you wouldn't wake up. I hope, to, some people might say, I hope I had a million dollars. Well, that probably just ain't going to happen, right? Um, not to say that it can't. But when we think of the word hope, hope is like, you kind of think maybe you might get it, but you just don't, may not really happen. But when you take that word hoped out of there and put what the Greek word actually is, expected is the Greek word. And let me let me just show that to you. I want you to be able to see that. Um, let's see. Hebrews. I don't want you to think as Brother Steve. I want you guys to know this for yourself. Okay, here it is. Things hoped for. Let me Let me make that bigger too. There we go right there. Can you see it on the screen there? To expect. All right. That's from G1680 is what it's actually from. El Pizzo. I guess that's how you say it. El Pedzo. El Pedzo is to expect. I like that a whole heck of a lot better than just hope. Have thing or a have thing, a hope or to trust. But the expectations, see, like, for example, if you take a child and that little fella, let's say he's just two or three years old and mama teaches him, you know, well, daddy's at work today or vice versa. Maybe daddy's there and mama's at work. Mama be home in a little bit. Mama be home in a little bit. Well, that child is under expectations for you to come home. You know, it's not a hope. A hope is kind of like, well, maybe they will, but maybe they won't. No. Expectation is, to me, it's more powerful than hope. It is something that you're expecting to happen no matter what. So now when we go back to the scripture and we look at that, faith is a substance of things expected. 
So what is it? First, the expectation is what's in your mind. Think, think of it like that there. The expectation is what's in your mind. So like, for example, if you're believing for divine healing, uh, whatever you might have, heart trouble, kidney trouble, liver trouble, lung disease, cancer, financial trouble, whatever you may be having, but you expect that God is going to answer you, that God is going to manu manifest that healing in your body, that becomes a real substance. That, that is faith with substance. And not only is it faith with substance, it becomes an evidence because you've already got it, you already expect it, now you have a tangible faith expecting on something that you can't see with your natural eyes. So I don't care whether you see it, whether you can smell it, whether you can hear it, taste it, or whatever, don't make any difference. When you have that expectation, it's going to happen anyway. Now notice, they said, for it, for it by the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the world's plural, worlds, were framed by the word of God. So when God spoke it, he didn't see a world. He didn't taste it. He didn't hear it. But he expected that what he said would happen. Let's look at Mark. Something Jesus says here. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that, whoso, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be you removed, and be you cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. That's, don't waver. Once you speak it, you hold on to it. But shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. There it is. Expectation. But shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. See, he already, in other words, you're already believing. You're, ex, you're, you're believing, you're expecting that what you said is going to happen. He shall have whatsoever he says. Now, do you think Jesus can break his own word? No. Remember, he says that I, in that day, you will know that I am in the Father, the Father is in me, and I am in you, and you are in me. That's a deep revelation in itself. But what is that? When God is living in you, ask whatever you will. Jesus said, if, if, if my word is abides in you and you abide in me, ask what you will. And some people say, oh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, but I don't want to ask anything crazy or anything, you know what I mean? Because, you know, why? Because you don't believe it. You know, the word of God said, I would above all that you prosper and, and be in good health. You know, and then people, you know, oh, I don't know, maybe God's punishing me, you know, and this is why I have this, this tumor, or this is what. Are you serious? The moment you repent of your sins, that's, that's cleaned off. That slate's clean. Only the devil puts it in your mind. You can't have it because of this or, or that. You got to take a hold of the word of God with faith and expect for God to fulfill his word. Expect it of him. Because it's a substance of things hoped for. It is an evidence of things that are not seen. And then he goes to give you all the great cloud of witnesses to prove it, right? By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. 
How did he offer one more excellent? Because he was expecting that he had it right. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous and God testifying of his gifts and by it being dead yet speaks. Wow. Think about that one for a minute. And yet your lamb has died as well. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, watch it now, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently. So it's not just a matter of faith as a substance of things expected, the evidence of things not seen. Don't just do it passively. Diligently seek God because he will reward you for it. In other words, don't back down. Hold on to it. Believe in the promise. And then remember, he says unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your trespasses. All right. So remember, that's the only important thing. Just make sure your sins are confessed. Forgive those that have done wrong to you and stuff. But if you've got, if you've confessed your sins and you've forgiven those that have sinned against you, you don't, there's nothing going to stand before the prayer that you offer unto God. Whatsoever things you ask for, whatever you have need of, as he said, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And if it's not happening, Something is in the way. Either something you've held against somebody or an unconfessed sin in your own life or you haven't had the true expectation. That's the substance of your faith is when you're expecting it. You're expecting mama to come home because daddy said she'll be home today. Or expecting daddy to come home from work. A little bitty guy. Be like that little child. Expect it from God. He, ha he owns everything. There's no end. No, you're, you're not going to exhaust God by no means on anything you ask him for. And so if you're suffering financially, expect God will do a miracle in your life. Put within your heart, even on the financial issues, right? So many people, I see so many people suffer financially. I'm not saying that you're going to have the Taj Mahal. But the one thing you can do, though, is you can put the expectation before God of what you have need of. And don't back down, but believe God will deliver and you'll have whatever you ask for. So think about what you're asking for as well. And just remember, there's nothing too great for God. He said, I would above all. Let me see if I can look that up for you real quick. Above all. Prosper and be in good health. It's in 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. We'll read it from verse 1. The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, even as you walked in the truth. 
I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. So the thing is, is besides your soul prospering, he said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in, be in health. You know? And let's see, succeed. Now, whether or not you have a financial need or whether or not it's prospering your soul, either way, God is still not slack. And God is able to do anything that your heart were to desire as we've already read already. So anyway, I hope this blesses you. And uh, I'm going back to work on the message that I've been working on this morning over about the witnesses and that coming judgment. That's very troubling. Uh, and it's a very difficult message to have to deliver. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.